is Ashley Fields with Yoder or Us, and today we are going to be painting uh, the Thankful Leaves blank. I did not post a link for the blank just simply because we're sold out right now, but I am planning on getting some more cut hopefully in the next couple of days. And so whenever I do restock those, I will make a post and let everyone know. So if I can just now get my... Uh, iPad to work. Here we go. There we go. So we can get everything shared and pulled up. Then we can go ahead and get started. There we go. I think I got it. Okay. Hello, everyone. Y'all, I haven't seen everybody in, I don't know, I think it's been probably three weeks. I had COVID um, for a little over two weeks. So I've been I've been down and out and honestly I'm still I feel better as far as COVID goes um, but I'm still so tired I'm just exhausted super fatigued so I've been taking it really easy and spending a lot of time in bed so thank you guys for being um, patient with me I know you guys have been expecting these tutorials like eh, a while back but here I am today so First thing I'm going to do on here, um, those of you that have gotten this blank, it does, it just has the leaf, kind of like the profile of the leaves on here. It doesn't have any of like the stems of the leaf kind of uh, etched onto here. So I'm going to use some chalk and actually draw that on before I get started. So that way, whenever I'm coming to add all that detail on there, I already know where I want to go with it. So, hey, Debbie, uh, Patty says, so sorry to hear that. That's okay, love. Hey, we all get sick sometimes. I just really, really, really appreciate you guys being um, patient with me. I know it's not the easiest thing, you know, when I have tutorials to do and I don't feel good. So, I haven't been live in weeks, but I'm glad to get to be here with you guys today. So, first thing I'm going to do, y'all, this is a big piece, so it's kind of hard to to get it all in frame. Um, I'm actually, I have my head over here looking at my sample and I'm just kind of gonna start by, I don't even know if y'all can even see that, starting in the middle and just kind of giving myself some straight lines out on the leaf. And then from there, that is how I kind of, you can start to do your little off pieces. So let me just keep on going like this all the way around and then I will show you guys what this is looking like. The nice thing about using the chalk as well is that um, if I actually don't follow that line, you know, if I'm like, oh, I don't like the way where that's placed, you can literally wipe it off. So I'm kind of just getting the basics, kind of trying to follow along with, you know, I painted this thing a while back, so it's hard to <laughs> quite remember uh, everything that I did on here. Ooh, sounds a little funky. I'm just using some chalk and just really setting out those lines of where I'm going to be placing them so that as I'm going on here and I am painting, I know where I'm headed. So I know it's kind of hard to see. Maybe on these darker colors over here you could see it a little bit better. I just gave myself some straight lines, just some kind of guidelines for me to follow as I am painting. So, hello D, Ava, Ashley, so glad y'all are here. Uh, let me see, Ava says, hey, hey, glad to see you back. Thank you, honey, I'm glad to be back. And D says, oh no, glad to see you were slowly improving. Rest up. Girl, that's all I've been doing is resting. Um, naps are now a part of my daily existence, except I haven't had a nap today and I don't have time. <laughs> so I might have to go a couple days without a nap because I have... I've got a lot going on today and um, I have another live tomorrow. I'm trying to get a lot of stuff done because I've not worked in weeks. Um, and y'all, it feels amazing outside. Anybody who lives near us, huh? how great does that feel outside? I actually have had my doors open on my workshop all day. Up until maybe 10 minutes ago, I closed the doors to turn the AC on. But other than that, I've just been letting the breeze come in. It's felt pretty good in here. So, hey Joyce, how are you, my dear? All right, y'all. 
I have, let me tell you these colors, because I know we had some messages of people wondering what colors did I use. My pumpkin is done with scarecrow white, so you have the um, stem is reindeer brown, and then from there I have light yellow leaves, uh, this, this kind of color orange, this one is your asterisk orange, which I know we've been sold out of at the store, or was it yesterday I was in, yesterday or day before? Um, I was in Pearland and I got two gallons of asterisk orange and I dropped it off at the store. So uh, Marcy, she works at the store, she's the one feeling, filling the paint jars now. So she should be having those kind of put out soon. So if we're out of asterisk paint, I know there is some at the store, we just need to fill them. So that's your asterisk orange. And then this color right here, uh, the more red tone, that is shading orange. So asterisk orange, shading orange, light yellow. That's the colors that I've used so far as my base colors, okay? Now, we're gonna go ahead and hop into shading. So, let me see, on my, um, my pumpkin, I did a scarecrow background, so I actually did a little bit of camel shading. But I even think, I think this one is, this is a mixture of like camel and scarecrow. Y'all, where are my, ah. Here we are, mixing spoons. About to say, I can't, I don't know where any of my stuff is. I have not been out here in a hot minute. Let me grab my water. There we go. So I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, scarecrow and camel mix together. I might even add some more camel to this just to kind of, I mean not camel, uh, scarecrow to lighten it up just a bit. But I was looking at my sample and I kind of felt like the regular camel was almost a little bit too dark. So let's just see what we think on this. I'm gonna use it, this is just a number 12 shader. And if you notice, um, my thankful words, I don't even know that you guys can really see the words thankful. They are etched on here. But as I'm coming and I'm doing any of my um, base coating or my shading, I'm going right over top of those words. I'm not worried about it because I'm going to come back in here and we'll get those words written in at the end. But for right now, my purpose is right now, I don't need to worry about it. I'm just gonna simply paint right over top as if they're not there. So, come on over here. Pull that down. Now I do think I might kinda bring that up a little. There we go. All right. Just get some light shading on here. You can add swishes, you don't have to. I kind of almost get some little, just kind of, you know, what I might already have left in that brush. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit. Now, you can tell I haven't been live in a while, y'all. I didn't even get prepared and get my water over here. Hold on one second. I feel like I'm being a rookie today. Not getting my water ready. So thankful I have a uh, sink right by me. Okay, so we got that pumpkin shaded, and from here we're just going to keep moving all around and get all of our colors shaded. So I'm going to use that same brush just because I don't want to have to wash a bunch of brushes when I get done. Hi Joan. Um, hi, hi Jeannie. Janine. Is it Janine? Jeannie. Jeannie. Hey Wendy. Tiffany. Great to see you guys. Hope y'all are doing good. Okay. Got that on here. Now let's get to yellow. We will, uh, on our light yellow, I will add a little bit of shading yellow. And the stemming, I'm not sure what to call it. It's almost like the uh, ribbing, the rib, I don't, I don't know, of your leaves. Um, I'm doing that with my shading brush. So first I'm gonna get this mixed because it is separated. And this is when those lines that you've already put on there with some chalk is going to be very beneficial. I keep on looking over here at my sample. I want to make sure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just start. And y'all, when I'm loading this brush, I'm just loading that corner. I'm not loading the entire thing. Uh, I'm going to start and just get the perimeter shaded. And then I'll come in here on that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it the ribbing. Uh, of your leaf. I will come in here and do that as well. Can I see that? Yeah, okay. So kind of 
and just follow on the perimeter, right? Now, from here, this is when those chalk lines come in handy. And I simply just follow those lines. Let me get some more paint on here. If you are not comfortable, I notice I'm turning this, shady, this shader sideways. I'm not using the width of it, the width of my brush. I'm almost using the length of my brush. So I kind of just starting by getting those lines on there for me. And then from there, I might need to do a little bit more. From there, I'm just simply doing my swish marks outward. Now notice they are kind of, you know, mismatched place, I guess you could say. I'm not trying to get it too perfect or anything like that. Just keep on going all the way to the end. Now you can add as little or as many as you want. That's kind of like everybody, you know, use your own, whatever you think looks good, your own discretion on that. Um, I kind of go in the middle, you know, almost a little here, a little there, but I don't want to get too overboard with it. I think, um, Sounds like UPS is here. And I am expecting more paintbrushes and finally, we have some three ounce paint jars coming in. And yes, they are here. <laughs> I don't know why they always wanna come and do a delivery when I'm on a live. Um, hopefully, it's, hopefully nobody steals my packages. All right, so on these smaller leaves, I just do one line straight up the middle. And then I kinda come in just like I did up on my bigger leaf and just add in a couple of swish marks. Simple like that. Okay, so got my yellow done. So you, uh, light yellow was done with some shading yellow. And we're just gonna follow the same exact process with all these different colors. So now on my asterisk orange, I'm gonna use shading orange. And then on my uh, shading orange, I'm gonna use red orange these script liners. Somebody said script liners. Debbie, yes. I got, y'all, I actually ordered um, uh, some new brushes we've never had before, uh, like some fan brushes. And then um, I didn't get rake brushes because they didn't have any in stock, but they had a brush similar to a rake brush so it'll give you wispy lines, but it's not a rake brush. What was it called? I cannot seem to recall. I don't know. I got all sorts of different stuff that I thought could be fun that I, I don't necessarily use very often, but I was like, you know, it would be fun to try this. So, veins. See, thank you. Thank you. They're veins. I'm calling them ribbing. Yo, I, I'm calling them everything. But thank you, Juan Ella. I appreciate that. Veins. Yes, we're working on the veins of our leaves. Oh, my goodness. Let me just pop my head out and see if uh, how many boxes we've got here. like it probably is paint brushes if it was the paint jars if those were here they have these huge ginormous boxes that are insanely big um, almost like a, a small appliance could come in them and so usually whenever I get my paint jars they honk the horn because like my shipping alone for a couple of boxes was like $200 so they're big okay I am gonna get my shading orange I don't have any. Let me get some more. Okay. Now I'm just refilled this, so that means I need to add a little bit of water. Anytime I am doing um, shading or outlining, I always do add a little water. That's just my personal preference. Okay, so again, using that same brush, I just keep washing out the same brush. We're just gonna dip the, dip the corner, not the whole thing. And then again, I'm using the shading on my asterisk. So let me move it over. Okay, so I'm gonna start here on that uh, kind of profile. 
And y'all, this color contrast between the asterisk orange and shading orange, when the paint is wet, it's you almost can't see it, but as it dries, it does kind of darken up a little bit. So the contrast might not be as bold as you know it is maybe with some other colors that are in our paint palette, but I still think it's it looks good together. All right. So again, following my chalk lines that I've already put down to create the ribbing. Is that the right word? Tell me I'm using the right word. What do we call it? <laughs> this is part of my brain. My brain has not been working since, or veins, ribbing, Ashley. Oh my Lord, I just need to hang it up and stop talking, y'all. Uh, but creating the veins of the leaves. I swear I have COVID brain and it just hasn't left me. Um, Ay, ay, ay. Somebody tell me when my brain's gonna start working and functioning like normal, because it just doesn't seem to be doing that. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. So kind of just taking those uh, long swipes that I've already made, and then coming off and doing some just swipes. Make some of these a little longer. There we go. I know it's hard to see right now, because it's not the best as far as like when the paint's wet it almost looks like a very similar shade um so as it dries it does get a little bit darker so hi paula how are you she says nice to see you back hope you're feeling better i'm getting there um i think like covid symptoms wise i feel a lot better the only thing that's still lingering is like my brain doesn't seem to want to function very well and i'm very 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 tired all the time and I go to bed at like 8.30, 9 o'clock is like the latest I go to sleep, and I'm still just, ugh, tired. But other than that, hey, I'm here. So Mary is, um, she's on a little vacation um, with her sister and aunt and cousin, and uh, they are enjoying some time away, because y'all, she's been carrying the bag for both of us the last several weeks, so. We are letting her take some time, and I will be the one doing lives the rest of the week. So hopefully you guys can hang out. I'm planning on being live again tomorrow. If not tomorrow, it will be Saturday. But I have the Happy Halloween totem pole uh, left to do. So anybody who wasn't here at the beginning, um, I am currently sold out of this blank, but I will be cutting some more. So I will try to have them there Saturday. Pardon me. Uh, Saturday is my goal, but y'all, I've been setting a lot of goals lately that I just haven't seemed to really meet. So hopefully I can meet that goal. Okay. Doing the veins, not ribbing actually, the veins. All right, so I got those lines down first. Those are the lines that I made with uh, my chalk. Why well, I love the chalk, because you can paint right over top of it. If you don't like where you happen to put that line, no big deal, you can literally rub it off, Windex it off, wipe it off with a rag, a napkin, it don't matter. So from there, I kind of just go do some opposite diagonal swish lines, if you will, that are just coming right off of my initial line that I put down, so. Hey Carla, how are you, honey? All right. So I got the orange done. Again, I know you can't see it that well right now. Let it dry a little bit. It'll get there. I'm going to put cap this one, wash my brush back out, and then um, we need to get some red orange, and then we need to do a little bit of uh, shading brown. Actually, let's do that shading brown right quick. I'm going to, I didn't even, y'all, I am like really acting like a rookie today. I don't even know where my blow dryer is. Oh, I see it, I see it. I didn't bring it <laughs> to the table. Oh, goodness gracious. Maybe I'll get my stuff together soon. I don't know. Hopefully. I guess the good thing I can say is that um, my, ch sorry, I had a call. But my, uh, I could say that my child, my husband, my dogs, my cats, and my snake are all still alive. So. I guess I've done something right the last couple of weeks because I'm telling y'all, 
my brain is not functioning. All right, take a little bit of shading brown on that um, reindeer brown. And here I'm just gonna add a couple swish marks uh, going vertical. All right, wash that brush out one more time. And switch over. Let's get a little bit of red orange. Now I I chose to use um, shading orange as a base, and that's why I'm pairing it with some red orange. Uh, you know, but honestly, you don't have to use this much orange. You could use you can use brown tones. Uh, you could really go anywhere with this when it comes to fall leaves. If you want to make a true fall leaf, um, thankful leaf piece for Texas, it's all going to just be brown because we don't have pretty colors down here. But hey, <laughs> we're going to pretend. Ava says snake. Yes, Ava, we have um, a little, uh, she's a corn snake. Her name is Ruby. And I hated snakes before we got her and my husband was like, can we get a snake? And I'm like, no, no snakes. I don't do snakes. And then we got her home and um, I've really grown to like her. She's very sweet. And she used to be out here in the workshop, um, but we actually moved her inside because I was concerned. Um, like I have my AC on during the day, but at nighttime I turn it off you know, I don't want to run an AC outside at night. And so it was hard with like the temperature fluctuating for her. And then as well as um, like paint fumes and stuff, I could tell she just, she would hide a lot um, whenever she was in here. And so we moved her into our office in our house. And now she's out of her, she's out from hiding almost all the time, just kind of hanging out right in on her log or whatever. She's just, she's super cute. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that about a snake, but she really is cute. So we enjoy her. She's, she just turned a year old, actually. Um, I don't know, a couple of, it was August. Oh, it's crazy to think that we're already almost to October. Where has September gone? I don't, I guess I've been sick, so I've been in bed. So September is nearly past, but yeah, she just turned a year old. Now this is that red orange and I was sitting there talking about my snake so I wasn't telling y'all what I was doing. But when I had first pulled this lid off, um, I had noticed the paint was really watery and that's because I had used this paint to outline some pumpkins. And so when I outline, I always add a little bit more water to my paint than I do whenever I shade. And so since it was really watery, I had to come and grab a little bit more paint and add more paint to it just to get it at the right consistency that I like for shading. Uh, Ava says, I guess it's better than a spider. So much better. I don't do spiders. I don't do spiders and I don't do cockroaches. That is a big no for me. Um, so in fact, that's like one of those, I have to make my husband come and take care of those. Don't do them. Don't do them. Can't do it. Uh, but the snake, yeah, she's cute. She's very timid and as long as she just gets fed and has some water, you know, she's good to go. She's not like my um, cats who like to wake me up at, you know, I don't know, four o'clock in the morning meowing because their cat bowl is half empty. It's not even empty, you know. Or my dogs who scratch at the door and whine and cry and all that. So, you know, she's a lot more low maintenance. Okay, so there we go. We've got those veins all done. You, you're starting to see now that this paint is drying. You can start to see it better on that asterisk orange. Uh, but there is the entire piece with our shading. So I'm going to put this shader up. Let me cap these. Uh, little paint cups I had and then I need to grab my blow dryer I did not have it ready <coughs> I guess I've been out of the game a little bit too long that I'm just like forgetting what I need to be doing okay 
So let's get this thing blow drying so we can get our outlining done and get our words on here. We can make do. Y'all, I really need to run out there and get that box of script liners because all mine are terrible. Really, really terrible. Um, but we're going to make do. Okay, so what I did next is we are going to do a little bit of um, shading red. I don't actually outline anything with black on this piece. The only thing I do in black is going to be the word thankful. Uh, but everything else, we're going to use a little bit of shading, shading red. Let me actually, I got, I got some wet paint here. I'm just going to dab it in hopes that I can get it to kind of dry out. I tried to blow dry that and it doesn't want to come out. So whenever I have like some chunks of paint on there and it's really from wherever I started wherever I started putting that paintbrush down right after I loaded it that's where I'll have like a little bit more paint there like almost like a glob so um, on that I kind of just take my finger and just dab it until I get it to dry hey Carla Carla says good to see you back it's glad I'm glad to be back I am um, getting to be feeling better a little at a time I'm still I haven't really gone out I swung by the store the other day to drop stuff off, but I've not really tried to be around people. Um, I did go back to the doctor last week and um, tested negative and was told that I'm, I'm no longer contagious, you know, but just to be on the safe side, I haven't really been out a whole lot. But I actually got sick over three weeks ago. It was like, actually this Monday would have been four weeks. So it's been a while. Um, I don't know if anybody's had COVID recently, but I feel like um, you'll start to feel better one day, and then the next day it'll be like you just feel like junk again. You know, I don't I don't know how else to explain it. And then um, you know, like I have been feeling better, but I do not have my energy back. That's something I just have not seemed to find. So I'm working on it. Working on getting better, feeling better, just trying to take care of myself, really. Okay. Now, granted, some of these spots, y'all, I am going to come back in like this. It looks kind of funky right here, but the, my letters are actually coming in right there. So a lot of this is actually going to get covered up by my letters. So I'm not so worried about it if it doesn't look, you know, perfect or great or whatever. No big deal. Definitely need to add some more water to this because this is too thick and I can tell because I am not getting the brush stroke out of it that I like to get out of it. And that always tells me that for me, I need to add a little bit more water. Sometimes it's I need to add more water or sometimes it's I need to add more paint because it's too thin. Okay. Now, I am obviously, I'm outlining um, the pumpkin with some shading orange, but I'm also going to outline the perimeter of my leaves. I'm, I just said shading orange. I meant shading red. I'm going to outline the perimeter of the leaves with the shading red as well. And the only reason I'm doing that is I felt like if you look at it like it is right now, 
it needs something to kind of break up my colors and black is just too dark and so I went with shading red and don't get me wrong when I started to do it I was like oh I don't know if I like that but by the time you get done and you add the white highlights I thought that it came out and it looked really really good um, so you could even add some more maybe add more red into this shading red and lighten it up so it's not as dark if you feel that it might be a little bit too dark. Um, I'm trying to make sure I stay in this frame, y'all. This piece, I want to say it's like 30, about 32 inches wide, something like that, 28 inches wide. I'm not 100% sure. This guy is wide, and he is, I think, 23 inches tall. And so it's kind of hard to get him in that camera frame. But basically, again, the only reason you guys are even seeing me using this is just I'm trying to really break up and create a boundary between the different color leaves. That's it. Okay, I'm going to turn it this way. Got a little wet paint there. That's okay. We'll just keep on moving. I'm hoping I can get this to uh, to dry with a blow dryer so that we can do the words in one video. The good thing is right now we have very low humidity, so things are drying rather quickly. Hopefully we can get this all buttoned up without having to go live a second time over this piece. So, hey mom, how is San Antonio? I hope you're enjoying it. Alrighty. So y'all, I'm literally just following those etched lines and following the exterior perimeter of the piece with this shading red and that's about it. I'm not putting it anywhere else. I'm not adding any swish marks, you know, highlights, low lights with it. I'm just simply following the lines. So trying to keep that, um, making sure I'm keeping it all in the frame for you. Moving around. Hi, Kitty. How are you, honey? Hope you're doing good. Y'all, I am. I am seriously um, not understanding how um, October is going to be here in like I don't know a week, a little bit over a week. First off, uh, September has just flown by, uh, but really, this whole year has flown by. Um, just kind of hard to believe that October's almost here and then before you know it, it's like we're gonna blink our eyes and Christmas will be here and uh, actually Mary and I and our family um, my husband and daughter and my dad we are all gonna go to Disney World for Christmas this year so we're kind of um, skipping Christmas like the traditional Christmas and we are doing a family trip. So my daughter is, uh, she actually turns 12 this December. And she's never been to Disney. In fact, she's never been on a vacation. Our first vacation was supposed to be to Jamaica. Uh, right, right when COVID hit. And so that got canceled because all the flights got canceled. And so she keeps saying, Mom, like, we still haven't gone on a vacation. So we've been talking about 
I asked her, I said, well, would you want to skip Christmas and have Christmas in Disney? You know, so that means like we're not going to do all the gifts and that sort of thing. The trip is really going to be the gift, right? Because I don't know if y'all have ever looked at the buying Disney tickets, but holy moly, they are not cheap. But we are really looking forward to uh, unplugging and having some family time for Christmas. So Carly says, how awesome. Yes, girl, we are so excited. So excited. Cannot wait. All right, y'all, one more leaf uh, to do that perimeter outline. And I'm going to hit this guy with the blow dryer and see if we can get it drying because I still need to add my thankful, obviously, and I need to do um, highlights. So, cross our fingers that uh, this um, kind of weather will help me. We've got very low humidity, so hopefully this will dry pretty quickly. shading red on there. Let me wash that brush out and cap this paint before I spill. I definitely tend to do that quite often. So. Okay, let's see if we can't get this. I'm really needing it dry. Um, anywhere I'm going to bring my arm over. that shading red first is because I needed those lines of the shading red to go behind the black lines of the thankful. Uh, but for the purposes of doing a live, I probably should have done my black first and then my shading red, but I did it the way I would have done it if I was painting it not on a live. So we might just have to make the best of it. If I have to come back online later and finish it off, I can do that. But we're going to try to get through it. can't finish it up. Hello, my dear. How are you, Joanne? script liner. Same script liner I was using. This is a Royal Gold number four, which it looks like I, that's what got delivered outside a little bit ago whenever all my dogs were freaking out. At least that's what I'm hoping is there. And if that's the case, I've got 30 script liners, 30 number four script liners in the box. So I know we've been out of those for some time, but I will get those back in stock here pretty soon. So I've got that thankful. I basically just kind of, I almost load up this brush and then I just kind of really put a lot of paint on here and um, almost put that brush down in those grooves and just pull it on through. And the nice thing about doing the words is if I kind of you know, like maybe my brush goes over that line a little bit. It's really no big deal. I just make the, kind of just make sure that it's a nice, crisp, clean line. But if I go over or I go under those, the etched part, it, it doesn't really bother me at all. I just keep on working with it. So now, inside of this thankful, inside of this black, once that black dries, it does need some white highlights. But that's not something I'm going to be able to do on this live. Now, I don't know if y'all could see that. My brush went a little bit cuckoo right there. So what I will do, just kind of bring that line up a little bit, kind of clean up that boo-boo so that you won't really even know that I made a boo-boo. So, 
Hey, Carolyn, she says, glad you're feeling better. Your mama, or, yeah, your mama missed you, and so did we. I know, I know. I had my mom worried because she would call every day. How are you feeling? I'm like, I still feel like, you know what? She's like, still? And I'm like, yes, mom, still. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I know as a mom, it's really, it's hard to see your babies not feeling good. And so, um, in fact, my whole family had COVID, my daughter and my husband. But them two, they, you wouldn't have even known they were sick. Yes, we all stayed home. Yes, we all quarantined. Uh, but the only thing that they could really say is they lost taste and smell. I seem to be the only one that had the fever and the body aches and, you know, the chills. And um, I almost just felt like my face was pressurized. I don't know how else to explain it. Like the pressure in my face and my ears, like my ears were popping. I would like yawn and my ears would pop. It was just insanity. Uh, but everybody else in my household had very, very mild symptoms. You know, they all got through pretty easy. So mom seemed to be the one that um, had the most trouble. But y'all, in comparison with a lot of other people lately that I've been seeing, I wasn't in the hospital. You know, I, I didn't have um, any major issues. It just was feeling like total crud for two and a half weeks. But other than that, I'm very blessed that um, I didn't have, you know, anything crazy bad happen. So. All right, basically I'm just continuing to follow um, all the lines that are already etched for me. And I just go start with outlining them and then I start to fill them in. Nothing too crazy. Um, as you can see, I also, I don't even worry about the words until the very end. And that's because I'm doing all that painting behind the words. And so if I were to do these words earlier, then um, I would end up painting over top of them. And so I wanted the painting behind them to really look like those words weren't even there uh, so that it just flows a lot nicer. And that's just kind of my take on it, my thoughts on it. So I usually always do the words at the end, especially on a piece like this where your word is really going to cover that entire piece. Is there anybody watching that is coming to the uh, paint party on Saturday? I think we're doing a Christmas tree paint party Saturday. So uh, Mary asked me yesterday or day before if I could come and help out this weekend. So I'm curious if anybody else is going to be there. I think we've got 20, 20 ladies coming for an in-person paint party where we're doing a... Um, four foot lighted Christmas tree. It's the same tree that we have released. I know a lot of you ladies that have been around, especially those that were here with us last year, most of you guys have already done the tree. You've already painted it and had it out in your yard. Um, but it is one that there's still a lot of people out there that, you know, they just want to be able to do their own. So we got a paint party on Saturday for um, that blank. I'm almost there, y'all. I feel like it's taken me forever. Okay, I'm just trying to keep making sure that I'm in that frame. One more letter.
Ta-da! Thankful. There we go. Felt like it took me forever. But we got it done. So, let's see. Oh, Joanne says she wishes she could be there, but uh, she lives too far. Oh, I wish you lived close to my dear. I live about... I live about an hour from the store, but to me, I used to live, we spent a couple of years in Colorado, and um, we moved, we, we were there for two years, I think it was like 2016 to 18, something like that, um, and so when we would drive yard art down six times a year, and that's a 16 hour trip one way, and some weekends we would literally drive down Friday and go back on Sunday, so... <laughs> You're talking what, 32 hours of driving in three days? And so um, I, I learned upon living in Colorado and then moving back home, to me now, driving one hour or an hour and a half to see my friends and like, you know, Alvin or Friendswood or Webster or whatever, that's nothing. That's no big deal. That's close. Uh, because I, I try to compare it to that 16 hour drive I used to have, which was not fun. All right, got some white here. We're gonna add some highlights. This white is really separated. Okay, I don't think I've used this guy in probably a month or so. So let's get that mixed back up. Excuse me, because it is really, really watery. Now, I'm not gonna be able to add highlights onto the thankful, the word thankful, but it does need highlights. Um, so that might be something tomorrow when I come back on live and I do the Happy Halloween Totem, which will be either tomorrow or um, Saturday. Uh, if y'all want, I can pull this back on the table at that point and add some white onto the words. But obviously, those of you that just watched me paint that, it has a ton of paint on it. And there's just no way I can um, add anything to that right now. If I attempted to put any white over that, it would all turn to gray. So I'm not even going to attempt. So let's add some uh, white highlights right quick, and then this guy will be done for what we can do today. <coughs> so basically what I'm doing, I load that brush up, and y'all, this white is dripping, okay? That's just how I like it. And I basically then offload. So I load and offload, okay? And then from here, I kind of just come in, and I want to do some just very light very wispy, just kind of almost following those that perimeter. Okay, didn't add too much. I don't want to add too much. I have done um, a similar pattern like this, and I tried to come into the veins and add a lot of white, and in my personal opinion, it did not look very good. And so I kind of tried to stick with just some, a little bit of perimeter on this guy um, and I just thought it looked pretty good like that so got a little bit of white over there gonna come in here and just kind of add a couple swish marks so again when I'm doing highlights this is on everything anything I do highlights on I load and I offload I want these lines to be light and wispy Now, on my smaller leaves, the three down here at the bottom, I'm just going to kind of go around the perimeter. I'll just start up here and kind of just follow those squiggly lines, if you will. Now, my brush started to split down here. And that's because it really needs to go in the trash. So I'll kind of fix that line up. Again. Load a little, offload some. And y'all, when I'm doing these highlights, I'm barely, I'm actually not using any pressure at all. I'm barely even touching that brush down. 
I want this to be light and wispy, so I don't have pressure. I'm not putting pressure on my hand, and I'm certainly not trying to put a whole lot of paint on here either. That's just when I'm doing highlights, I like it to be very light. So I think that's about all I'm going to be able to do on our live today. Just simply because that thankful is super duper wet. So let me put the brush up. Let me cap this right quick. I'm going to show you guys this up close. So just light highlights on the edges of your leaves. Okay. And I just leave it like that. Again, the only thing left to do is when this thankful dries, I need to add some highlights onto my letters and then that'll be it. So let's do a quick recap of colors. I did start with one coat of white using a roller. I always, 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 always put white underneath colors like light yellow, light pink, light blue, any pastel colors. Um, you're going to want a coat of white underneath there so that those colors pop. If you are having a color that you keep putting a, multiple coats on and it's still not coming out, put white underneath it. Unless you're doing red. Red is an exception. You can actually do gray underneath red or reindeer brown underneath red if you're having trouble with red, not white. But your light pastel colors, yes, you're going to want white as a base. So started with a coat of white. From there, I base coated uh, this yellow is light yellow. So here, here's light yellow. Um, this orange is my asterisk orange number 17. So asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. And then um, my other orange, this darker orange. This is actually shading orange is my base on there. Okay. Um, my pumpkin is done with scarecrow. And then my stem is done with reindeer brown. From there, on my asterisk orange, um, I shaded this guy with uh, shading orange, okay? On my light yellow, I shaded with shading yellow. And then on my shading orange, I shaded with red orange. On my scarecrow pumpkin, I actually used a mixture of scarecrow and um, camel together for that pumpkin shading color. And then now on that stem, I just use a little bit of shading brown. From there, I did a perimeter outline on everything with the shading red. And then on my thankful, that is just done with straight black. And then I added some white highlights. Only thing left to do again, I need highlights on the word thankful, but it's going to have to dry. So that is all I have for you guys today. Joanne says, looks good. Pam says, looks awesome. Thank you guys. Y'all are just so sweet. Um, I hope that everybody enjoyed this tutorial. Y'all let me know if you have any other questions. I hope that y'all now feel confident in the colors that I'm using because I know I had several messages asking what, what colors were these? So hopefully that answers um, those questions for you guys. And I look forward to seeing you guys either tomorrow or Saturday. We're doing the Happy Halloween Totem Pole. And then after that, I believe all of our, at least my fall Halloween um, tutorials are all done. So looking forward to that. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. 